know a little bit. Um, today, we are going to start in a bit of a new direction. We're going to talk about ways of organizing your data in such a way that it can be retrieved much more efficiently. Now, this is going to be tied in somewhat closely to uh, the query evaluation strategies that we talked about. And in fact, towards the end of the week, I'm going to talk about various ways of incorporating these index structures into your uh, query evaluation strategies. But today, let's just talk about the actual data structures that we can use to organize the data. So the core idea behind indexing is that there are a whole bunch of the, the one of the, the primary constructs of SQL is, is this where clause. You specify a condition that you want to hold over the data that you see. And the idea of indexing is that you build a data structure that can very efficiently answer uh, which subset of the tuples um, satisfy this particular predicate. And of course, the, the, the big challenge here is that we don't want to necessarily see the entire data set. I mean, if we see the entire data set, then we can very easily just pick out, select those, uh, those tuples that match the, the condition. Uh, in this case, what we want to do is very quickly just identify exactly that the subset of tuples that match the condition that we're interested in. So essentially, we're, we're going to create a data structure that organ or one of several data structures that organizes the data in some useful way. Now, if you have uh, now a where condition can have fairly complex uh, predicates in it. It can, it can have essentially any sort of Boolean formula over base predicates. And we want to be able to support uh, arbitrary predicates. So essentially, rather than uh, the more complex your, uh, the, the formula is that you're trying to create, uh, that, that you're trying to create a data structure to organize, uh, the harder it is to create that data structure, and the harder it is uh, for that data structure to be efficient. So we'd like to uh, have some standardized way of representing these Boolean formulas so that we can very easily uh, sort of identify the, the precise data structure that uh, can be used to support it. So here I have a, a fairly simple uh, where condition. It uh, contains a conjunction of two predicates and then a disjunction uh, on a third predicate. So uh, either so we're looking for all officers that have rank greater than two who are on the USS Enterprise, uh, or any officer that has rank greater than three. And there's a uh, standardized representation. In fact, there's two standardized representations, uh, one called disjunctive normal form and one called conjunctive normal form. Uh, in conjunctive normal form, essentially what, you're, what you have is a formula uh, which contains a set of clauses, uh, and you're computing the uh, or, the disjunction of each of those clauses. And each clause is uh, an and, or a conjunction of, uh, sorry, a disjunction of such. Conjunctive normal form is a conjunction of disjunctions. And uh, each clause uh, has an or, each, um, and then the clauses are joined by ands. You can take any any Boolean formula and transform it into into this form. Uh, show of hands, who is familiar with sort of uh, who's encountered conjunctive normal form, disjunctive normal form before? Really, not not many people. Uh, okay, uh, so let me spend a little bit more time on this. Um, so essentially, you can you can think of an ant. Um, Okay, so here we have uh, something that is in, uh, it's not in conjunctive normal form because there is an and nested inside this, this, uh, this predicate that is getting ordered with something else. Uh, essentially we want to take the ends and move them all the way up to the top. Now, a uh, show of hands, who's familiar with the law of distributi uh, distributivity? So, a bit more. Most of you are probably familiar with this, not necessarily uh, by that name, but if you get um, uh, one uh, two times three plus four. Basic arithmetic. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the fact that this is equivalent to two times three plus two times four. Same exact deal. You can take any n 
create a sort of product and then distribute uh, the OR over it. So essentially, sorry, if, if the atom is treated as a product, if the OR is treated as a difference, you essentially end up with, uh, if you can essentially multiply things out or, or distribute things out and you get, uh, you can transform everything, anything into uh, subjective normal. Now, you know, of course, uh, once it's in, in conjunctive normal form, there may be certain simplifications that you can do. Um, in this case, officer.rank is greater than 3 or officer.rank is greater than 2. Uh, clearly, there's uh, only one. Um, if the officer rank is at least 2, then it has to be also at least 3. Now, so we're, we're basically going to be working mostly with formulas in um, that are in conjunctive normal form, and we'll see the reason for that in just a moment. Uh, but basically, the, we're going to be dealing with these individual terms in a conjunctive normal form formula. And for the time being, I'm going to assume that these uh, that we're, we're going to skip fours. I'll uh, hopefully have time to get back to those a bit later on. Now, the reason that we're using conjunctive normal form formulas is that every single clause has to be true. Um, if we have condition one and condition two, both condition one and condition two have to be true. So if we build an index over one of those two conditions, then we can very quickly, uh, then, then we know that any records returned by that index are guaranteed to also, um, we, the, the records guaranteed, uh, returned by that index are guaranteed to be a superset of the records that we're interested in because both conditions have to be true. So, to be a little more precise, uh, an index is essentially a data structure that allows us to very quickly access records that match a specific condition. And we're in particular going to be looking at two kinds of conditions, uh, which are pretty much the most common uh, types of indices. Um, either x equals some specific value, the, uh, where we're looking for a fields that match a specific value, or uh, range searches where we're looking for records uh, where a particular field falls within a certain range of values. And of course the, the key thing here is that you need some sort of value to build the index over. Um, so we're usually going to take one of the fields of uh, every tuple and we're going to uh, build an index over that particular field. Um, and the index is essentially going to allow us to, given a particular key, or given a particular range of keys, uh, find every, find either the tuple that falls in that range. Um, alternatively, we might have a record, we might get back a record ID for the tuple. Um, what's the distinction between these two? So we can either store the, the, the entire contents of the data of the relation in the index itself, or we can store just a pointer to the records that we're interested in. Um, what's what are the advantages of each uh, of these approaches? Sorry. Okay, so we can reshuffle, re rearrange the physical layout of the tuples in the database in case without necessarily um, without necessarily rebuilding the index. Um, what's a good advantage of this? It's fast. Yeah. So basically you don't have to follow the pointer, which usually means fewer IOs. Um, there's actually another advantage to storing just the record ID. Any idea what that might be? Yeah, memory small space. Uh, so essentially, yeah, the record ID takes up typically a lot less space than the entire tuple. So we can store uh, many more of these in the index than we can uh, of these. Uh, now something to keep in mind is that we're not necessarily guaranteed that uh, the values in that field K are going to be unique. So it's entirely possible, even on an equality lookup, that we get back uh, not just one record, but a list of records or record IDs. And that will come up a bit later. Now, um, for one, one other for side note here, um, the organism, um, the choice of which of these to do is um, is a separate decision from how exactly you organize your index. 
So I'm going to be talking over the next two, possibly even three lectures, over uh, about various data structures that you can use to organize your data. And uh, something I want you to remember is that each of those data structures works regardless of what exactly you store. If you store the record ID, each of the data structures will work. If you store the full tuple, each of the data structures will work. Um, if you have multiple records for a sim single key, each of the data structures will work. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. So, yes? What is it? Uh, between this and this? Uh, Basically, I'm just trying to make the point that um, <coughs> it's not necessarily the case that you will get back just one record ID. So you might get multiple record IDs. Uh, and what is uh, this? Uh, so I'm just here. I'm saying one record ID. Here I'm saying multiple record IDs or, or uh, records. Uh, not not much of a distinction. Just trying to make the point that you might have multiple. Although you might also have some indices that only have. Uh, so one thing we'll be talking about next week is this idea that uh, you can have you can get certain information about the database. So, uh, for example, uh, ship ID. Um, you're pretty much guaranteed that every uh, that the ship ID column has one row per ship ID. It's known as a uh, key uh, constraint. And in that case, if that's the key that you're indexing, then um, you, you're guaranteed to get only one record ID. And you can do certain things a little bit more efficiently. Now, uh, I'll talk about that a uh, little later, either today or on Wednesday. Does that answer your question? Uh, so speaking of which, any more questions? Yes? Uh, if you look at the audience, the first, uh, the first uh, index, uh, it's like, uh, what's the difference of the index mark of the original? Um, the index is essentially du going to duplicate the original data file. Okay, so why not just uh, device or something? Why, why, why uh, you could treat, you could in fact replace the original data file with an index. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that each index generally requires the um, the data. As we'll see in a moment, the the data has to be laid out physically on in the uh, the file where it's being stored in a very specific way. And if you want to index build, so if you're just building one index. You're, yeah, just replace the data file with, with one of these indices. Um, on the other hand, if you want to build two indi indices uh, over different fields, then it may pay to have a full replica of, of the data, depending on how fast you want to access it. Does that answer your question? Anything else? Okay. So, uh, with that, let's move on to the first of these data structures, uh, something called a tree index. The idea here? As the name implies, we're going to basically build a uh, tree over the entire data to organize it. Um, and a tree index is it allows us to support both equality searches, where we're looking for specific keys, uh, as well as range searches, um, reasonably efficiently. Um, Right. And so, okay, so we've, we've already had this uh, brief discussion that if the data file is sorted, then we can access it potentially more efficiently. But here I have a sorted data file. It covers uh, five pages. Um, now let's say I'm looking for uh, the value 37. Uh, how many IOs, let's say each of these blocks is one page. How many IOs would it take me to do a lookup on to find 37 used, uh, in the most efficient way possible? Three? Yes. Why? Yep. Uh, but uh, so, what algorithm would you use to, to find binary search? Okay. Yeah. So essentially, you you do a binary search, and in the absolute worst case, you end up with. Um, Three, uh, uh, three full IOs, uh, and in general, yes, uh, exactly, two uh, log base 2 and um, IOs. Okay, now this is obviously not ideal. Um, this is a huge number of IOs, and each of the IOs uh, has to be sequential. You can't parallel, you can't just uh, scan over the file. In fact, scanning might even be more efficient uh, since 
you can you end up essentially scanning regardless. Um, so what can we do better? Any thoughts?
quadrillion divided, sorry, what'd you say? Divided by, okay. Yeah, so essentially you'd have to store 10 uh, trillion records in this. So we're basically talking about 100, give or take 100 gigabytes. And I don't know about you, your computers, but uh, mine doesn't quite have that much memory. Um, even the servers. So what do we need to do? We need to break the index up somehow. And how, uh, any questions up to this point, by the way? Uh, so, what we're going to do is essentially have a hierarchy, a hierarchy of these indices. Um, we're going to start off with a root index that points to uh, another set of indices, and then each of those, those second level indices are going to point to a third level of indices, and so forth, until we get to the leaf pages, which actually store the data that we're interested in. Um, and, of course, the, the index, each page, has to store um, essentially a set of uh, keys and a set of pointers. And we'll, we'll see the layout in a moment. Uh, and just again to recap, these leaf pages uh, can, can, will contain uh, the, uh, the, uh, pairs of either the keys and the record IDs or keys and the uh, full records. Oh, and uh, one bit of terminology, the, uh, we're going to call these, these data pages the leaf pages and uh, the rest of the pages, the non-leaf pages. Okay, so how do we build one of, one of these, these index structures? Um, so we're going to start by taking all of the, all of the data and sorting it. Uh, so essentially, at the very beginning, we're going to sort of uh, assume that all of the data is sorted. Um, and then, essentially, we're, we're just going to cluster these, these pages together uh, and start building indices over it. Uh, we're going to take as many of these, these uh, leaf pages as we can find, as we can uh, fit pointers to in a single uh, page, and we're going to build an index over them. Repeat, 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 and just keep doing that until uh, you've created one level of index for every single leaf page. Then you're going to index the, the uh, indices and keep doing that until you get a single root level index. Um, okay. Now, how do you do a, uh, a lookup on this? Well, you're going to start at the root and you're going to basically find the key that corresponds to uh, that's a. Uh, you're going to find essentially. Uh, I have a better example of this further on, but essentially your page, your index pages are going to look like this. Say three, fifteen, one. So we're going to start off by finding the uh, pair of keys in this index page uh, that the key that we're looking for falls between. So if we're looking for, let's say, 10, 10 falls between 3 and 15, so we're going to follow the, uh, the pointer in between 3 and 15. Similarly, if, we have, uh, if we're looking for, let's say, 2, 2 is less than 3, uh, but you don't have any, basically the, the left side is negative infinity, so we're just going to follow the first pointer um, in the index page. So we're going to just repeatedly do that and, and sort of traverse the tree down to the appropriate leaf page and uh, find the, key, the leaf page that we're interested in, load it in, and find the entry that we're interested in. Okay, so I've just described how we do uh, a lookup on a single, um, a single tuple. Uh, quick answer, how, how fast can we do this? Or how many IOs does it take to do this? Yep, yeah. exactly. Uh, so how do we go about using the same process to uh, to find all of the pages that uh, appear in a particular range? And uh, let me give you a little bit of a hint. Um, since we created all of these in sorted order, we can make certain assumptions about the layout of these pages. Uh, for example, we can ensure that these pages are all uh, contiguous. They're all one big uh, 
page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and so forth. So how would we go about finding uh, everything that falls into the range, let's say, uh, 10 to 33? What do you mean by log n? Uh, traverse, okay, tra uh, traverse to the leaf page of? Okay, so find the leaf page of 10. Okay, and how many pages do you load? Well, you do, uh, so you, well, it's not page number 10, but you can find page number 10, and how do you find the page 33 is on? Same deal. So you just, uh, you find, use the, the standard key comparisons to find the start and the end page, and then, since they're all contiguous, just load those pages. Um, any questions so far? No, it's um, you, you squeeze however however many uh, entries you can into the page. Exactly. In fact, it's uh, you, you want to make this tree as shallow as possible because uh, the shallower the tree, the fewer IOs it takes you to get to where you're going. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, one thing that I haven't uh, that I have skipped over. Uh, Index structured access method is, is what that acronym stands, stands for. Um, you don't actually need to know. Uh, just, um, anyway. Uh, okay, so uh, any questions up to this point? Okay, so um, now there's a fairly obvious problem uh, that we've already, um, has already come up. Uh, what happens if you want to modify the data? Um, any thoughts on how you might uh, address that? So let's say we're, we're planning to support some level of modifi modification at the very beginning. Um, any thoughts on how you might lay out this data, uh, lay out the lead pages to support uh, insertions and deletions? Yes. Great idea. Um, so for e in each page, we can leave a little bit of extra space. And as soon as uh, we get an insertion, we find the appropriate leaf page, and we insert it into the free space. So what happens, uh, oh, and the, the key thing here is that the index is not going to change. So we're, we're only going to update the leaf pages in this particular uh, layout. Now, what happens if you run out of free space? Any ideas? Sorry? Well, if you, if you start putting data into the next block, then you're essentially going to have to restructure the index. You're, you're going to have to rewrite the index so that um, whatever data you put into the next block um, has to be mapped appropriately. And we'll get to that in a bit, but um, just for this, this basic layout, without changing the index, what can we do? Uh, we can increase the depth of the tree, um, but again, that requires modifying the tree itself, and, and we, will, we will get to that. Um, let's say, uh, without modifying the, the, the index itself, just my, by modifying the lead pages, what else can we do? Uh, well, <coughs> we need more space in the leaf. Yeah, so we can create uh, what are called overflow pages. Um, so we just so somewhere in this in each page, we have a little pointer that says, "For more data, go to this particular page." It's not super efficient, but if the data is relatively static, then this is fine. Um, what about deletion? How would you go about deletion? This not not super hard. They're not not meant to be super hard anyway. Yes. Yeah. Find find the tuple that you uh, that you're going to delete. Delete it, and if you emptied out one of these overflow pages, free it. 
Um, something to be aware of, though, is that you're not, again, you're not modifying the index at all. All right, let me give you a, a bit of an example of, of this structure. Um, so here we have this um, ISM tree. Uh, again, each of the keys with the pointers. And now we're going to uh, insert a key, oh sorry, each page can contain uh, two values. Uh, so we're going to insert the value 23, and we have to allocate a new overflow page for it because uh, the part of the appropriate page is full. We're going to uh, insert 48, uh, 41, and 42. Uh, this, of course, requires us to add more progressively more overflow pages. Now we're going to delete 97. Well, that doesn't change anything. We're done. Uh, we're going to delete uh, 42. We can free up the page, and we're going to delete uh, 51. Something to note, again, and I'm going to keep harping on this, uh, the fact that uh, 51 is a separator between uh, this set of leaf pages and this set of leaf pages. Uh, the fact that it is, it is a, the fact that we're deleting 51, we don't have to change the index at all. It still acts as a separator between those pages. The only distinction now is that uh, we don't actually have a value there uh, labeled 51. So any questions on this example so far? Great. Let's move on. Okay. So, uh, yes? Uh, when you're inserting a data, is it a pointer? Do we not have to make sure that uh, the data should be in the sorted order? Uh, no. Uh, so, well, yes or no. Uh, that's That actually depends on, on your implementation. Um, you're going to have to do a full traversal of of, that entire, of the entire set of overflow pages regardless. And rearranging may be, excuse me, may be more expensive, rearranging the, the uh, pages may be more expensive uh, than necessary. But yeah, it's uh, depending on, this is an implementation decision, essentially. Uh, you can, or you, but you don't have to. Either way, you're, you're finding the subset of pages that's, that's relevant. Yes? Um, Insert a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was too many tables um, just before 51, so now they really can start this structure. Exactly. So, as you noticed, um, this, this ISAM approach doesn't really handle insertions particularly well. Um, we create lots of these, these chains of, of overflow pages. Sorry? Uh, well, we can free the pages after we start running the index. Uh, the index stays the same. Uh, so essentially, we'd like some, in addition to, to having this uh, way of accessing uh, static data, we'd also like to have a good way of restructuring the index, adapting the index uh, so that it, efficiently adapting the index so that it stays in sync with the data. Uh, is there a question? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sorry. So each of those was a uh, individual key. Uh, the the value was the key itself. There was no uh, in the example. I was I was just uh, sorting the keys themselves. But you can as assume that. Uh, so for the, the rest of uh, these two classes, I'll, I'll be sort of uh, working with, with just individual keys just to save space. But you can kind of assume that every key is associated with the record that it corresponds to. Uh, does that answer your question? OK, and so next we're going to talk about this idea of a B plus tree. Uh, a B plus tree is essentially a key, uh, a tree, uh, similar to the, the ISAM uh, tree that, except in this case, uh, the tree is going to restructure itself in such a way that um, that the 
we don't have to use overflow pages. Essentially, the, the tree stays uh, balanced. Uh, so every leaf has roughly the same amount of data in it. Um, and of course, the, the key idea here is that anytime we insert a tuple or delete a tuple, we might need to make certain modifications to the tree structure. And we'd like to keep those changes as minimal as possible in order to uh, keep those changes as minimal as possible while at the same time keeping the tree balanced. So what exactly do I, do I mean by keeping the tree balanced? Uh, well, there are two properties. First off, the entire tree is going to have the same height. So every single leaf node is going to be at the same distance from the root, the same depth or height. Um, and the second property is that each leaf node is going to contain, uh, is, is going to have at least 50% utilization. So half, at least half of the page is going to contain data. Um, now in, in practical implementations, uh, the only the insertion operation provides this guarantee. Deletion might actually sort of just delete the node and leave the page there. Um, or this is typically done just because insertions tend to happen much more frequently than deletions. And having a slightly larger index than necessary uh, will save you potentially uh, efficiency. So if you, if you keep inserting and then deleting, you might end up growing the tree and then shrinking it and growing it, and that tends to be uh, less efficient. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to be describing is sort of the, the, uh, the canonical way of implementing a B-plus tree. Yes? Uh, sorry? Uh, this? This? Uh, oh, sorry. So the, as I'm saying, the, uh, the guarantee that we'd like to provide is that after every insertion or every deletion, there each page um, is 50 percent is at least 50 percent full. And what I'm uh, so in a canonical B plus tree, that guarantee is always provided. I'm going to show you algorithms for both. Right. So what um, in most practical B plus tree implementations, uh, insertion provides the guarantee that everything stays 50 percent full. Uh, deletion does not, um, just because it, it saves you from doing excess work if you keep inserting and then keep deleting. Basically, it keeps you from having to uh, grow the index and then shrink it back down and grow the index and shrink it back down. You end up uh, putting a lot of work into that <coughs> if, if you keep inserting and deleting values. Yes? Yes, at all, every single node except for the root node. The, exactly. Okay, so how, how exactly does that work? Well, again, a little terminology. We're going to have uh, data entries and index entries. And this is essentially the same thing as leaf nodes and non leaf nodes. It's just a different set of authors created this. Um, now, one of the major distinctions between a uh, ISAM tree and a B plus tree is that because we're going to keep adding more and more nodes, um, the data nodes, uh, sorry, the, the data entries, data pages, are not going to be sequentially allocated. We have to be able to insert new new data pages in there. So we're going to end up with uh, having to create a linked list here. Does everyone understand that distinction? Okay, so um, lookups happen precisely the same way as they do in an ISAM tree. We have uh, keys, and if we want to find five, then five is less than 13. Bam. Uh, we're looking for 15. Uh, it falls between 13 and 17. Follow the pointer. Bam. We will want to find everything greater than 24. Well, 24 happens to be a key. Great. Follow the pointer. Start at this page and do a linked list traver traversal until we get to the end of the list. So that's easy. Um, what's interesting here is uh, how you insert tuples. So we're going to start out by finding the leaf that we're going to insert the, the new record into. 
And if it turns out that there's free space in that record, great, we're done. Nothing more to do. Um, if that's not the case, then we're going to need to split that page. So we're going to take that page, we're going to sort all the data in it, and we're going to find the median value. And then we're going to put exactly half of the records into uh, one page, exactly half of the records into another page. And so now our, our one record has become two records. Oh, sorry, our, our, our one leaf page has become two leaf pages. Um, then we're going to take that median value and we're going to copy it into the parent uh, index as, as essentially a separator value uh, between those two new pointers that we've created. And of course this can happen recursively. So uh, if we fill up an index page, we may need to propagate that split up. So that was a little complicated, so let me give you a more concrete example. So here I have um, a B plus tree where the root pages uh, can contain four entries. And uh, I'm going to describe the process of inserting the value 8 into this tree. So we're going to do, we're going to start off by finding the appropriate leaf page, uh, which is going to be this one, since 8 is less than 13. Uh, now, of course, this page is now full, so we, uh, in order to insert an 8, we're going to have to split it. So let me zoom in on uh, this page and the index. And well, what, we're, what are we going to do? We're going to take all of the data in that page. We're going to add the 8 into it. And then we're going to sort the data and find the median value. In this case, 5. We're going to split on that value and create two new pages. We can re actually reuse the old page. So basically whatever the, the old page was pointing to um, for one of those two. And just we have to allocate one new page. So OK, now we have a new uh, split value. So the, the distinguishing, uh, the, the separator value between these two is going to be the first page in that, uh, uh, the, the first entry in, in the second page, namely 5. So what we need to do then is take the 5 and copy it into the parent, uh, in, into the index uh, pointing to these two pages. Now, of course, this index is also full. So um, if we actually do want to add 5 into that index, we need to split. <coughs> so we're going to do exactly the same thing as before. We're going to take uh, all of the index entries. <coughs> we're going to sort them. And then we're going to find the median value. Uh, now, the distinction here is that rather than copying the, the value as a separator, we're actually going to take the, uh, the entire entry, and that's going to form uh, the thing that we, we insert into the parent. So now, uh, we're going to split this at 17 and create two new child indices, uh, 513 and 2430. We're going to move 17 into the parent. Now, in this case, we only have uh, one level of index. So rather than, uh, so we have nothing to, to move 17 into. So we're actually going to create a new root. Uh, we're going to make the, the index be one level deeper uh, using that 17 as the only entry in this new root. Does that make sense? And we can go back to uh, the full uh, index. So, um, out of curiosity, why do we move rather than copy the 17? What what is uh, is there a benefit to? Would there be a benefit to keeping the 17 in, in one of these pages or one of these these index pages? No. What? Right. So, yeah. So basically, you always you always hit this uh, have to hit this page before you hit any of the others. So, essentially, once you hit this page and you know that you're looking for a value that's less than 17, by the time you get to this page, you know that the upper bound is already set, is is 17 already because you've already 
you're already seeing the AP parent. Um, uh, second question, uh, is this splitting process guaranteed to uh, produce pages that have at least 50% occupancy? Yes. Why? Essentially, the, uh, the, the pages are, you only split when the page is full, so you're guaranteed to have at least half a page, more than, more than two halves of a page, uh, to put into uh, the new split records. Right, so the, the, one, the one node for which this guarantee doesn't apply is the root node, because, uh, well, you never, you never split the, you create the root node without splitting it. Any questions up to this point on insertions or deletions into a B plus tree? Uh, delete, we're running a little low on time, so we'll ask through this. Uh, deletions happen in pretty much the same way. Uh, if, if, the page, uh, if you delete something and the page isn't half full, uh, you're going to have to merge it together. And the way that works is very similar. Uh, so if I delete 19 from this, uh, it's fine because that uh, the page that 19 was on is still half full. If I delete 20, now the page is no longer half full, so I need to, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so one thing I can do here is borrow, uh, borrow values from adjacent pages. So, if, so in this case, if I delete 20, uh, this page no longer has uh, full occupancy, but one of its siblings namely the, this, this page here, has more than half occupancy. So I, what I can do is borrow, in this case, the 24, move the 24 uh, over into this page uh, to ensure that I still have 50% uh, occupancy. And of course, this means that I also have to update the separator value. Um, so yes? I'll agree to this if you want to go back to the I'll the pointer the bottom of the Oh, you only, uh, sorry, so in this, when I say sibling, I, only, I mean a uh, child of the same parent. So you, you don't borrow from, uh, you only borrow from children of the same parent. Uh, that makes things much simpler. You can borrow from the left or the right as long as you're only borrowing from children of the same parent. So you'll never borrow from, the, uh, it, to fill this one out, you would never borrow from this one because it, it has a different parent. Yeah, this one, this one can borrow from either side. What is your uh, analysis? Say, uh, say again? What is your uh, analysis? That's a very good question. So what happens if we now delete 24? Um, well, we only have one entry there. We need to start merging. So we're going to take one of the, one of the, uh, uh, the adjacent siblings, and we're going to merge it into that one record. And then we're going to essentially do the reverse of, uh, of a split. Any questions on this? Okay, uh, one other thing to note. Um, you can do something similar uh, to redistribute entries uh, in something that isn't a leaf. Uh, you essentially end up doing this sort of weird rotation. Uh, because you, uh, so the, uh, the entries, uh, when you shift entries from, from one of these uh, to its peer, rather than, uh, rather than updating this, you, you actually replace this with one of the entries from here. And this entry, as well as any other entries you're using to rebalance, move over to that side. Uh, that was a little convoluted. Um, but we are running out of time, so I'll re recap that at the start of next lecture. And with that, um, yay indices, yay trees, and we'll resume this uh, on Wednesday.